As I said before, my name is John Fatano. I'm the Environmental Project Manager with the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. As Kevin pointed out earlier, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission is the federal agency responsible for the review, siting, and construction of interstate natural gas transmission pipeline projects. This is an interstate natural gas transmission project starting in Alabama through southwest Georgia and into Florida. The Commission is required to conduct an environmental analysis of the project when it considers whether or not to approve it. The environment includes the birds, bees, and the bunnies, but also the human environment, things like residential impacts, things like air quality. Those are things I'll talk a little bit more about in a minute. Talk a little bit about the environmental review process. I am the environmental project manager. It is my job to conduct the environmental review. I've been doing this for 10 years with the commission, and I, like, I take my job very seriously, and I like to think I do a pretty good job at it. I know folks want a thorough environmental review conducted, and that's what I'm, I'm here to do. So you'll see me again, and you'll see my name on these documents. A little bit about how we do this environmental review. Right now, we are in what we call our pre filing review. In October of 2013, Sable Trail Transmission approached us and asked us if we would participate in them, with them, excuse me, in their pre filing review. So that means that no application has been filed right now. This is a pre application process. No application has been filed and no permits have been issued. <coughs> the purpose of the pre filing process is to work with the company, the Federal Interim Regulatory Commission, myself, interested stakeholders, other federal, state, local agencies, counties, cities, Georgia DNR, Environmental Protection Agency, all those folks that think that would be involved in a project like this, to get all those folks talking and, and find out what's good about the project, what can be improved, you know, what are the concerns that people have. The pre-filing process, as I said, is designed to what I call shape the bushes. You know, these folks would like to build a natural gas pipeline. They need to do their homework, and this is part of their homework, and this is part of our homework as we review it. We need to know what's out there, what's going to be affected, what people think is Concerns. And this is a very important part of our process tonight is the public comments and scoping. And I'm going to come back to alternatives in just a minute. But we need to learn about this project. We want to hear from you about what your concerns are. We have opened a 60 day scoping period for people to send us letters, tell us what their concerns are. We've been working on this since October. We've had meetings with Sable Trail, we've had meetings with some of the state and federal agencies. We're going to have meetings tomorrow with the Environmental Protection Agency in contact with the Georgia DNR. We've met with some of the counties here in the area. So we're, we're talking to folks and, and hearing what your representatives have to say so we can become informed. As Kevin pointed out, that helps us conduct our environmental analysis. Nobody knows this area better than y'all. I'm not going to tell you I do. You do, so I need your help to do my job. One of the, the, the main parts of the environmental review process is the alternative analysis. And, and one of the first questions, not, maybe not the first question, but one of the first questions people ask is, can it go somewhere else? Is there an alternative? And alternatives come in lots of different forms. Uh, alternatives come in, is there another way to get this energy? Is there another way to move this pipeline, to you know, route this, this pipeline? There's a lot of different ways you can do alternatives. We are working with the company, and the company knows they have to answer those questions too, so they're starting to identify alternatives. Uh, we are working with the company, and, and working with some of you, as a matter of fact, to identify alternatives. Are there different ways to do this project? Are there different ways to go? Different ways to do it? This is a big project. And, and Mitch here, who's with, the, uh, with us, is going to talk a little bit about the details of the project. But it's, it's, you know, in total, probably 600 miles of the pipeline to look at and review. So it's a lot of work for us. But the alternative analysis is a very significant part of the environmental review. As I said, the public scoping comments portion of the meeting <coughs> process is, is very important as well. That's what we're here for tonight. So we have this pre-filing process where we, we learn about the area. We come to understand uh, some of the resources that could be affected. People this week have talked to us about groundwater, the Floridian Aquifer. People have talked to us about you know, the agricultural impacts and some things y'all do here, the center pitted irrigation. And these are things that we, we knew and are reinforced to us and reiterated to us. People have expressed concerns about their house their property values, and how this could affect them. People talk about how long it is they've had this land and how important it is to them, and, and the trees, and the oaks, and a lot of things that we've learned about. I have six or seven pages of notes just from last night's meeting. So, if a company gets through the pre-filing process and, and makes their pipeline project better, 
they then decide they want to file a certificate. And that's an official application. And then, then we start really looking at, well, I should say, we're really looking at it right now. But then it's an official project. Once it's an official project, we conduct a similar review. We check all the information we have. We ask DNR to help us make sure that the information that we're given is right. We ask the uh, all y'all to help us with that information. And I should point out that everything that is, is submitted to the FERC is available for public review through our website, www.perk.gov. Almost everything that I issue to the company in terms of questions I have, things that they need to do, and interactions I have, are all available for the public for review. The commission takes very seriously the pre-filing process and public oversight, and public involvement. You know, I understand y'all take time out of your, your lives with this information, but it's important because it helps us. As I said before, you know your land better than we do, so we need you to help us kind of check this information. I'm going to take questions in just a few minutes about how the FERC does its job and the FERC process. But once the certificate application is filed, we then prepare an environmental impact statement. Environmental impact statement is the culmination of all the, the work that we've done, identifying what the resources are going to be affected, how they would be affected. And they're generally prepared in a document such as this. This is an environmental impact statement for a project that was built in Florida a couple years ago. You can see it's pretty, pretty, pretty heavy here, several hundred meters long. And this is where we report and disclose everything that we've learned. That environmental impact statement is issued to the public for review and comment. We take those comments into consideration, and I should say we take comments that are given to us you know, beginning from day one all the way through to the end of the project when it comes up for approval. So we take those comments and make sure that they're incorporated in the EIS. The EIS is then, and there's another slide there, yes, this is environmental analysis. So I talked a little bit about the things we learned and things we covered in the EIS. The EIS has a project description, has a purpose and need, and this is not a comprehensive list. This is just an example of things that are in the EIS. And I, I apologize for keeping on saying EIS, I know. It's an environmental impact statement. I don't want to lose folks with all the acronyms. So you can see here the list of resources we go through. And, and again, that's just part of, of what we look at. So an environmental impact statement is prepared. That is a recommendation to the commission. They take that into consideration when they decide whether or not to approve the project. The commission will consider a lot of things, including the environment. They'll consider economic and legal factors, and at some point, in the future, if this project progresses to that point, they will make a decision on whether or not to approve it. So I think that is the environmental process in a nutshell. I'm going to turn it back over to Kevin just for a little follow-up, and then we're going to take some questions on the process so we all can you know, uh, learn about what we do and how we do it. If you have some specific questions for me, I'd be happy to answer them. Kevin? Yeah, um, <coughs> uh, we're almost done part one. Uh, so 